It is time for Crime Watcher, a program that is proudly brought to you by your police service, the Zimbabwe Republic Police, in order to cement police public synergies in combating crime. Elliot Akudzai Ganyani is my name, and thank you for joining us. The Zimbabwe Republic Police says no to stock theft cases and is calling upon members of the public to partner us in combating these cases. In a recent case in Harare, 98 goats were seized by police after a complainant had identified 16 of the goats as his. It later emerged that the goats belonging to the complainant had been stolen in Siakovu, Mashona and West Province. James 1, 19 October 2022. I was in I was Upon receiving this report, we dispatched a team of four police officers to attend to the scene. They managed to apprehend four suspects in connection with this case. Through investigations, we managed to interview one complainant who was at the scene. He positively identified 16 of the gods as his. As police, we therefore suspected that all the goats adding up to 98 could have been stolen. We therefore seized all the 98 goats and impounded the motor vehicle which was used to transport the stolen goats. We urge farmers to continuously check on their stock even when they are grazing during the day. It is also vital that you pen your stock each and every day. And prior to penning, count your stock to ensure that no stock are missing. Public utilities and infrastructure are there to render important services that are critical in our day-to-day -day lives. It is, however, disturbing that some people choose to destroy and vandalize these utilities. In a recent case, the police spokesperson for the Criminal Investigation Department, that is Detective Assistant Inspector Rashom Teweri, spoke on the arrest of some people for theft and vandalism of these public utilities and infrastructure. Vandalism of public utilities and infrastructure impacts negatively on the country's economy. It retards development in that the vandalized infrastructure ceases to function, services will be disrupted, and a lot of inconveniences are caused as a result of vandalism of public utilities and infrastructure. And as such, we as the Zimbabwean Public Police continue to challenge members of the public to complement our efforts in safeguarding public utilities and infrastructure. Recently, police in Murewa arrested Simbarashet Nashe Chitau for contravening Section 60 of the Electricity Act. Circumstances are that on 19 August 2022, the accused person, together with his accomplices, approached the security guards who were manning a farm in Juru area. They manhandled the security guards before tying them and robbed one of the security guards of his cell phone. They went on to vandalize a transformer before getting away with their loot. The security guards managed to untie themselves and mobilize the community who came to their rescue. A follow-up was made on the accused persons resulting in their arrest. Simbarashe Tinashe Chitao has since appeared at Murewa Magistrates Court where he was sentenced and convicted let me take this opportunity to warn would-be offenders that vandalism of public utilities and infrastructure carries a mandatory 10-year jail term. Be warned. The National Development Strategy WANA is focused on promoting the national economic development as pronounced by the country's Vision 2030 targets. The ZRP will continue playing its part in protecting the country's public utilities and infrastructure so that this vision yields to reality. Moving on, the Zimbabwe Republic Police is disturbed by reports indicating leakages of the 2022 ZIMSEC Ordinary Level Examinations and is carrying out investigations to make sure that all criminal elements are brought to book. The ZRP will ensure that arrests are effected on anyone who is circulating examination papers on social media and in some cases physically to the public. Meanwhile, the Zimbabwe Republic Police would like to urge the media as well as members of the public to direct all administrative issues uh, to Zimsek uh, and let uh, the Zimbabwe Republic please uh, handle the criminal investigations. 
from that story. We are taking a short break. Join us in the second segment. The police are seek to offer the highest quality service to the public and improve on efficiency and effectiveness in service delivery. In line with this, construction of a new charge office and administration offices at Chinamora Police Station in Mashonland East Province is underway following a groundbreaking ceremony that happened at the station. The community of Chinamora have their own aspirations, which is to see their station being transformed to provide a service par excellence, coupled by the establishment of a state-of-the-art charge office. The dream of a modern station has now transcended into reality, a reality that expresses the new dispensation's mantra of leaving no one and no place behind. Today, this quotation reflects not to inner growth, but a different type of development where we see Zetara Beach in Amwara migrating from using temporary fuel structures to brick and mortar. Today we are all witnessing the fruits of an enjoying partnership between the police and the community. Indeed, such relationships deserve our collective applause and should be cherished by all well-meaning Zimbabweans. On behalf of the government of Zimbabwe, I wish to extend my profound gratitude to what Chief Chinamora in this community have decided to do as a way of improving police service delivery in their community. I am reliably informed that the intended construction of offices at the police station is not the only gesture that this community has extended to Zetara Beach Chinamora. It is equally moving to note that the community is managed to drill a ball, acquire a transformer, and install a solar-based power backup system for the police station. I take these multiple kind gestures as a challenge to the police and redouble their efforts and work tirelessly towards making Shinamora community safe. Indeed, the ball is now in your court to deliver. <laughs> Groundbreaking. Uh, this is a historical and uh, we want this to happen everywhere in our province, everywhere in our own country. This is very, very good that we are now having modern, actually, uh, stations which goes with the vision uh, uh, 2030. Moving on, the Criminal Investigation Department Drugs and Narcotics is working round the clock to end illicit substances and drugs dealings. More arrests have been made at the Victoria Falls International Airport as well as the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport in Harare. As we continue fighting against illicit drug trafficking and drug and substance abuse, CID Drugs and Narcotics works closely with sister stations at entry and exit points such as borders and airports. At the moment, we are at Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport Police Station where we apprehended a 62-year-old foreign national who was trying to smuggle 7.7 .7 kilograms of heroin from Zimbabwe to India. We immediately seized the contraband and the accused person has been taken to court where he is remanded in custody. In another case, detectives stationed at Victoria Falls International Airport also arrested a 46-year-old foreign national who had smuggled one kilogram of cocaine into the country. The contraband of cocaine has been seized and the accused person has been taken to court where he is also remanded in custody. To all those who are using Zimbabwe as a transit nation for drugs, be warned. Road safety is everyone's responsibility. The Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe continues to inform and educate the public. There has been high volumes of traffic with children going to and from schools. 
As is our norm, we would like to urge them to exercise caution on the roads, especially when using the roads as pedestrians, cyclists, or as passengers. When using the roads as pedestrians, we are encouraging children to walk on the right-hand side of the road, facing oncoming traffic. We encourage them to cross at designated places, such as intersections and pedestrian crossings. We understand that during school run, parents also take part in transporting their children to school. As such, they should should adhere to traffic laws and make sure their vehicles are roadworthy. For public transporters, we are imploring them to always be cautious on the roads. We say road safety is everyone's responsibility. Hence, let us all be responsible road users to avoid losing lives. From this story, join us in the third and final segment. Welcome back. We are now in the third and final segment of Crime Watcher. The Zimbabwe Republic Police is concerned with murder cases that are happening across the country, mostly as a result of petty domestic issues. In Murewa, a 23-year-old man murdered his own grandmother after he accused her of bewitching him. We received a murder case whereby a male adult aged 23 years by the name Vincent Katam murdered his grandmother, Febi Chitikam, aged 85 years. After receiving the report, police attended the scene and investigations carried out revealed that the murder case occurred after an altercation between the deceased the grandmother and Vincent Katamba. Vincent Katamba accused his grandmother, Febi Chitikam, of bewitching him after consulting some traditional healers and prophets. On his return from, from these consultations, he went back to Kufia village, Chief Mangwende in some area, where he attacked his grandmother, leading to her death. Vincent Katamba was immediately arrested. Currently, he is in remand, assisting the police with investigations. It is our constitutional mandate as police to save and preserve life. We therefore appeal to members of the public to solve their differences amicably without using force. They are free to seek professional guidance whenever they face domestic conflicts. While the nation is still mourning the death of 10 people as a result of an inferno which happened in Umzingwane, Matabalele, in South Province, reports of fire outbreaks continue to be received. Murewa has not been spared. In the month of September this year, 2022, we recorded cases of fire instances that happened in our area of policy. The most worrying is the case of a woman aged 94 years who was killed by fire trying to extinguish that fire. And we also received another case of eight nuts belonging to different villagers that were burnt in Madamombe village in Murewa district. We also recorded another fire incident that occurred in Murewa Business Center where six shops were gutted by fire and we suspect an electrical fault. Then on the 5th of October 2022, a shopping complex in Mutoko was gutted by fire again and the hardware was destroyed. As Zimbabwe Republic Police, we appealed to members of the public to desist from starting open fires since we are in a fire season. I urge communities to form firefighting committees to assist each other in the event of a fire and also engage qualified electricians to connect any electrical connections. Should a fire occur, please be quick to alert the police so that we can engage relevant authorities. We visited some of the places that were gutted by some of these fires where property worth thousands of dollars was destroyed. There was a fire that gutted this whole building, which emanated from this very room that we are standing from. The damage is so excessive. But one thing that I noted on this building was the fact that uh, there were parapet walls that we had they did not go 
to the certain level that would separate the uh, rooms for one room from the other. So when the fire started now, there was one roof on the whole building. So the fire traveled through the, the vacuum. That caused uh, the, the, the burning down of all the buildings. It did not been for that. It would have been maybe one room that was going to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. So it's a lesson that we learned that uh, when we build these uh, shops and whatever buildings that we might be building, we must have uh, precautionary measures so that we try to uh, in ensure ourselves from, from some such, such, such disasters. But the, the, the advice that I would give to the general public or whoever is going to have uh, structures being built, be it in their homes or whatever, business premises, farms, wherever, we need to standardize our structures, adhere to the regularization processes. We need not to have shortcuts in whatever we do. And I would want to advise as well people to have fire extinguishers in their areas of operation. Then lastly, I would want to appeal to the local authorities uh, to, 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 I mean, to spearhead maybe a, a, a program that would facilitate an area like this area of ours to have at least a fire control uh, center. In the event that we have fires, if we don't do that, we're going to lose a lot of properties here. Let us take heed of these messages uh, so that we don't become victims of fire outbreaks. Uh. From those uh, sad stories, uh, we now move on to people who are on the police wanted list. Sakuva police is looking for Tendai Tatire, age 32, of house number 165 Majambe, Sakuva Mutare, for a case of unlawful entry into premises and theft. Sakuva police is also looking for no rest Ziko, age 21, of house number 266 Chisamba Singles, Sakuva, for a case of having sexual intercourse with a young person. Lastly, Victory police is looking for Talent Maposa, of stand number 27, Escadal Victory, for a case of theft. Should you have information that may help in locating any of these wanted people, please feel free to visit or contact any nearest police establishment. Alternatively, you can link with us on any of the following details. Our national complaints desk number is 0242-703-631. You can visit our website at www.zrp.gov.zw. Email us on feedback at zrp.gov.zw. We also have a Twitter handle at Police Zimbabwe or Facebook page Zimbabwe Republic Please. You can also link with us on our YouTube channel Zimbabwe Republic Please. It really has been a pleasure having you along from the crew behind the scenes and I, Elliot Kudzai Ganyani. Yes, do remember to take care of your loved ones and each other. Until then, it is bye-bye for now.